UNCC Charlotte take on the Bradley Braves and Frank the big key for Bradley can they come back after Monday night's tough loss to ISU they have to come back of course and they will uh, in several ways if they can accomplish some things number one Bradley shooting's got to return it's had a three game vacation the jump shot's gone away particularly in the first half of those last three games Bradley's averaged 33 percent from the field not a regular Bradley team second Bradley's got to have a baseline game. They need to get the ball inside one, and then when they get it inside, they need to be able to score. Illinois State did a great job of taking the outside away from Bradley, giving Bradley the inside, and Bradley couldn't get the ball in the basket there. I think another key to this game is going to be the play of Byron Dinkins, the great guard of the uh, UNC Charlotte 49ers. He's number four. When the game is on, you'll watch him. He is the key to their team. They rely heavily on him. All the options on their offense are keyed off Byron Dinkins. Watch for him tonight. And, of course, tonight also pits Stan Albeck, former NBA coach, against Jeff Mullins, former NBA star player, and two contrasting styles, even though they both have NBA experience. I talked to both of the coaches, as you have before the game. Stan Albeck would like to score 100 points. He says, remember, we're 99.9. We're almost 100% yeah. pure in scoring average. And number two, Jeff Mullins says he liked the game about 75 points, maybe 80 points. You see the difference in tempo that they would like in this game. All right, now one guy who knows firsthand what's happening in the Bradley locker room is Marty Gillespie. That was assistant coach. Marty, uh, what's the mood of the team coming off Monday's uh, uh, frustrating loss to ISU? Well, we were there a little down yesterday, which I think happens oftentimes in college ball. Today they seem to have bounced back pretty good. Uh, you know, they're upbeat and, they, you know, they're up-tempo a little bit. And, I, you know, I think they're ready to play the game. They know what's on ESPN, and they know they need to get the, the train righted, so to speak, before we head back into conference play. Now, the reason we pulled you out of the locker room is because you've seen this uh, Charlotte team. You saw them against Kentucky, right. a, a game which the referees played a factor, and they, they could have beaten the Cats on their home court. They're pretty tough. They got robbed at Kentucky. I mean, there was no doubt. Uh, the kid has the ball out of bounds underneath the baseline. They've got a chance to, to take the lead in the late seconds of the ball game, and he, get, he got pushed out of bounds, and, you know, they gave it to Kentucky and called a travel. But uh, they had Kentucky beat at Kentucky. They lost to uh, the number one-ranked Division II team in Florida Southern. You know, so they're a good basketball team. We know that, and they're going to come out gunning. You know, you mentioned this is a sellout crowd, and, you know, yeah. everybody wants to see you shut down the 100-point-a-game team. They want to see you shut down Hersey. So I think, you know, from those standpoints, we are going to have to be ready tonight. And you know what it's like playing a program which is on the rise, and they get a little publicity tonight. The crowd, uh, boy, they're really going to be pumped up. Right. I read somewhere, I think this is the first national televised game they've had in, you know, in some time. And, uh, you know, they're really, they're a young ball club. They're a lot younger than we are. And I think a win tonight would really give them a lot more recognition. It would give them some credibility and things like that. We need to get ourselves righted so we can come back into conference play playing well. And, we're, you know, we want to get into the top 20. We, you know, we need yeah. that recognition as well. It helps in recruiting. It just helps build momentum. And it helps your schedule and your power rating when you head into the NCAA tournament. Marty, thanks a lot. Get back to the locker room. It's going to take me about 20 minutes to get there, but I'll try. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Marty hurt himself today playing a little racquetball with Joe Stoll. But uh, getting back to this game, Marty mentioned the fact Bradley wants to get in the top 20. That's, um, a, I think, a real significant point in the game. Both of these coaches and programs have been talking over the course of the season about toning that kind of talk down. But you can't. The USA Today computer ratings puts Bradley at number 18. They put uh, UNC Charlotte at number 22. The power ratings are 88 to 87 in their computers and all of that business. The main thing, though, is what the coaches and players are talking about. Both these teams have tough inside players. They have a great perimeter game. The secret of the game is going to be around the perimeter. How about Hawkins? Hawkins and Manuel against Dinkins out front with West. Dinkins is the key to one team, Hawkins and Manuel the key to the other. The guard play will decide the game probably. Now coming up at halftime, we're going to talk to Marty Blake, the NBA scout. He's here to watch Hersey Hawkins as are maybe five or six other scouts. Hersey really gets excited when those scouts come in. He, he knows they're out there. Well, you know, uh, Hersey Hawkins is going to be a first-round draft choice. I think everybody yeah. agrees to that. The one thing that he keeps playing, like he's playing, Doug, and he keeps having the kind of numbers, he keeps having the kind of rebounding, and he keeps having the temperament that he has, not only will they talk about Hersey Hawkins as a lottery pick or a first-round pick, but somebody's going to mention that a player of the year has to be named in college mm. basketball. Yeah. And right now, this young man leads the nation in scoring. He's averaging nearly 38 points a game or almost 10 games into the season. And that's going to get suggested somewhere along the line that Hersey Hawkins is a legitimate candidate for player of the year in college basketball. And then on the other side, we've talked about him, but the folks in Central Illinois have never seen him play probably. Byron Dinkins, a little guy who uh, the NBA scouts say maybe next year he's only a junior. He could be a first-round draft pick.
Rex Chapman, the great guard from Kentucky, had a great line about Byron Dinkins when they played. He said, I'm happy to be on the same court with yeah. this guy. Oh. This is an outstanding basketball player. He's lightning quick. He's a penetrator. He starts on the point, and he kicks the ball to the wing, and then he'll try to take Anthony Manuel down into the low box tonight because he's 6'2 and a half, and Manuel's about 5'10 or 11. So that will be another thing for the fans to watch. Anthony Manuel is going to try to guard him man-to-man, -man, and it, another factor is, can he do that without getting into foul trouble? Believe it or not, we still haven't covered every aspect, and we'll do that when we come back and the uh, game officially starts. So stay with us, everybody, and we'll be back. Eyewitness Sports presents Bradley Basketball. Hi, this is Stan Allback, and this is my man for the best car deals in the Peoria area. You salaries at Beldy Ford and Beldy Lincoln Murphy. Thanks, Stan. We've got the best selection of new and used cars and trucks at the lowest prices right here at Valley Ford and Valley Lincoln Mercury. If you think about it, why would you want to go anywhere else? Come in and join the Valley team today. Bradley and Valley, the two hottest teams in Central Illinois. And remember, if we can't beat your best deal, we'll give you the car free. Just tell them Stan sent you. Well, Fred, our little company's moving up. Well, Max, on our way, let's stop at Computerland. We need another computer. Computer Land was easy on the old budget. Even taught you to use it, Max. <laughs> Let's try Compact. Your Compact Portable 3 is one fast, popular, powerful, portable computer. A Fred and Max like the convenient weight and lightning speed. See the Compact Portable 3 now at Computer Land in Champaign, Bloomington, Springfield, and Peoria. The Lazy Boy and Lane Action. You can't beat the style, fabrics, and comfort of the two leading wheels of the And now Applegate brings you the largest selection in Central Illinois. We have over 400 models in stock, starting as low as 179. It's worth the pleasant drive to Blackstone for Lazy Boy and Lane Action quality at the lowest prices in Illinois. Our prices are free at Applegate. They must return from the ashes of Monday night's loss to Illinois State. It, it's a must tonight. Illinois State had a great game plan against Bradley defensively. They executed it very well. They switched on Hersey Hawkins everywhere he went and covered it with big and people and, and, and the front people as well. Bradley expects to see more and more of that as the season develops because Hawkins is a marked man. He is with this crowd at the Charlotte Coliseum tonight. Dinkins is the marked man for the 49ers. We expect a great game. You spoke of the Coliseum, 11,222 in holds, and they're expecting a sellout tonight. At least that's what they told us. The band is playing, the crowd is pumped up because it's been a long time, 1977 to be exact, since this team has really done something. That year, of course, Cedric Cornbread Maxwell led the 49ers to the Final Four, and that's what everybody talks about. Coach Lee Rose then, but Jeff Collins got them back. Before he came, they averaged crowds of 1,907 people. Now, we're going to talk about 10,000 plus here tonight, and this program is back on the front burner. No doubt about that, Jeff Mullins, the former NBA great from Kentucky, was an All-American at Duke, played for the San Francisco Golden State Warriors. He's been here, this is his third season, and he's turned the program around. Before that, he turned around an ailing automobile dealership, so uh, he's a magic man when it comes to turning things around. He was in the Olympics in 1960 in Tokyo, 64, and a 60 graduate. He was Mr. Basketball in Kentucky, and he's Mr. Basketball in Charlotte right now. Yeah, Adolph Rupp, the famous, legendary coach from Kentucky, very upset. Jeff Mullins went to Duke, and that's a story. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to see you on behalf of the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. We welcome you to the Charlotte Coliseum. Tonight's college basketball game features the Braves of Bradley and the 49ers of UNC Charlotte. They love their Niners. Here are the starting lineups. First of all, the very Bradley Bradley. They played very well. Starting at one forward, a 6'6 senior from Chicago, Illinois. Number 21, Jerry Thomas. 
Jerry Thomas looking to do better after an off game against ISU. The other forward, a 6'7 senior from Havana, Illinois, number 40, Trevor Trimpey. Trevor Trimpey always solid, averaging his 30 ISU. minutes a game. At center, a 6'8 sophomore from Springfield, Illinois, number 53, Luke Jackson. He'll be tested. Dan Plotkey, the big kid from Charlotte, can play. He'll be tested. At one guard, a 5'11 junior from Highland Park, Illinois, number 12, Anthony Manuel. Must do better. Control the turnover. And he's from Chicago. And a 6'3 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number 33, Percy Hawkins. The man who needs no introduction. 7.8. And the head coach of the Braves, Stan Albeck. And now for the UNC Charlotte 49ers. And one forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Georgetown, Kentucky, number 35, Frank Kersley. This young man was third in the Mr. Kentucky balloting behind Rex Chapman two years ago. He can play. A 6'8 sophomore from Worcester, Massachusetts, number 45, Cedric Ball. Cedric Ball shows UNC Silver six big school from the Buford Island with Buford. number 45, Dan Wonke. The only senior, a big boy, top, top rebounder. And on one the team. guard, a 6'2 junior from Charlotte, North Carolina, number four, Byron Dinkin. The Dink, they love him. He's there, Hersey Hawkins, and if you will. And a guard, a 6'3 junior from Bermuda Run, North Carolina, number 11, Jeff West. He's the smart man on the team. And the head coach of the 49ers, Jeff Mullins. Some NBA blood flowing on both sidelines tonight, Frank. But different philosophies, as we pointed out earlier. Bradley averages 99.9 points a game, and UNC Charlotte averages 80 points a game. There should be a big scoring match tonight. We'll be back with the opening tip right after this. They say the car you drive says a lot about you, but we think the kind of people who drive our cars says a lot about Audi. When you're ready to follow your own road, you're ready for an Audi. Like I said, we was on our way to church on Good Friday. And at 11 o'clock in the morning, this drunk driver just came down the hill and... To be there, Jeff West controls the tempo. Once again, the starting five for Bradley, Hawkins, Manuel, Jackson, Trippy, Thomas. For the 49ers, Dinkins, West, Franke, Cedric Ball, and Frank Persley. This is Cedric Ball jumping against Luke Jackson. Here we go, the tip goes out of bounds. And it'll go Bradley's way. The Braves will bring it in bounds. Trevor Trippy will toss to Anthony Manuel to start things off. Here we go from Charlotte, North Carolina. The Braves against the Niners. And the man to start the game. Jerry Thomas inside. The miss, the rebound by Byron Dinkins. We'll call his name a lot tonight. The Dink, number four. The Dinkins Moore will have the ball most of the time for the Niners. And a walking violation on Cedric Ball. Took the pass from Dinkins. Slid his foot. Got called for the trap. Dinkins and Manuel. Over Trippy up top, over to Anthony Manuel. So far, a tight man-to-man -man defense from the Niners. Hawkins, the first shot of the game, the first bucket of the game, and Bradley takes the early lead. Jeff 
Hornquist is the best defensive guard for the 49ers, but he hasn't guarded Hersey Hawkins yet. No, that's for sure. This is Dinkins over to Pursley, the man from Kentucky we told you about. Cedric Ball, 44. Dinkins will shoot. Quantity, uh, the big kid inside, the miss. Battle inside and a whistle. A foul on Luke Jackson from behind. Position got that done by Cedric Ball, and there's some wide bodies on the floor for the 49ers, but they've got a couple on the bench even wider. <laughs> no doubt. Here's the foul inside. Plonky with a miss, a rare miss. He shoots over 60%. The battle for the boards. And apparently they stopped it before the foul happened. Didn't see it on the replay. Here's Jenkins now. Over to West. Firstly, back out to Jenkins. West the fake inside, up with it with a left hand and a foul on Hersey Hawkins. Hersey Hawkins' first personal foul. And Hawkins doesn't foul much. He's only had 19 fouls on the season going into the game. And he shot 116 free throws, so he's a really under control player. Jeff West is a 75% free throw shooter, a southpaw as you see. Pretty good player. Broke his foot last season, but they say when he came back from the injury, the Niners were a different ball club, much better. He's been in the shooting slump the last five, but he can throw it up. Tied up now, 2-2, 18 and a half to play. Quick on the transition game, Bradley as always. Mango to Hawkins, wide open. There's the miss, ball to rebound. Niners will come down and we'll go on the break. Plotky on the break, the miss. Trippy with the rebound, here comes Bradley, made it, leading the charge, three on two inside to Thomas, the foul, oh, they got Thomas with a foul. Cedric Ball had position, Rich Eichhorst in the Missouri Valley called that one, folks. Jerry Thomas, his first foul, third foul on Bradley, we've only played a minute and a half. Bradley's first pass break, good entry pass by Manuel, followed by Jerry Thomas. On the replay, it did look like maybe he was set, Cedric Ball. Man to man for the Braves, of course. This is Man Byron Dinkins. Excuse me, Doug. Manuel will get help whenever Dinkins comes off a screen. Dinkins has not shot the ball as of yet. He's had consecutive 30-plus games. And out of bounds he goes. Bradley will take over. It's still 2-2. 17.49 on the clock. I think Stan Albeck would like the tempo to pick up a little bit. It favors UNC Charlotte right now. Trevor Trippi being carded by Pursley. Over to Hawkins. Inside of Luke Jackson, the fake, the miss. Jerry Thomas, back up, the block. It'll stay Bradley's way. That's what we talked about earlier. Bradley's got to have inside game scoring. They got the ball down on the low block. Jackson and Thomas couldn't get it in. Good help defense by the Niners. They had a scout at Monday's game, the ISU Bradley game. They're playing a similar defense as the Redbirds. They should hope. <laughs> Hawkins, the shot. Wide open. He didn't get many of those against the Redbirds in the first half. It's 4-2, Bradley. Here goes West. High dribble, the drive. Mr. Jeff West has shown us some quickness, number 11. They might be going at Hawkins a little bit on the defensive end for Hersey to tear it, wear him down a little. Trevor Trippi up top, not a surprise. The big guy into Jerry Thomas. He misses, out of bounds. Nope, West saves it. Here comes the Niners. Donald Powell's going to get off the Bradley bench. Pursley from three-point range. The miss. Whoa. Bradley didn't go after it. And a new 45 up for the Niners. This is West. He scored four. Dinkins, the first shot of the game. The miss. Rebound by Luke Jackson. Leading rebounder on the Bradley team. Out the manual. I'm surprised Bradley hasn't tried a three yet. Here's Hawkins. You might have heard you. We're right next to him down here on the floor. Jackson wants it inside. We're going to get Sparky to steal. There's Dinkins one-on-one -on -one with Anthony Manuel. He goes for the steal. The loose ball. Globe trotter style. No good. And Bradley will take over. A little sloppy on that break. But a good defensive effort by Manuel. He might have flicked that ball as Dinkins was flying to the basket. Howell in for the Braves. Watch it. Here's Dinkins. Got it. Good defense by Anthony Manuel, quick hands against a man who they say one of the quickest players in the country. He just 
just needs to keep his weight up. They want him about 165. He played about 140 the last part of last season, I think. And Hawkins, yes, tips it away. Showing quickness again. Three on two break. Trevor Trippy gets his foot in the way. It's a scrap. And Charlotte will maintain possession. Nice job by Jeff West of the 49ers. He's really played hard on both ends. Right now, 15.54 in the clock. It's a 4-4 game, and the tip ball definitely favoring UNCC. So far, a low-scoring affair. Only eight points scored. 4-4, 15.54 to play. UNCC will take the ball out underneath their own basket. Donald Powell in for the Braves. Checked in for Jerry Thomas. Shooting percentages show both sides very cold. Here's the pass to Ball. Looking inside. There's Dinkins. He can go inside. The hook shot. The miss. Trippy with a rebound. Another scrap. Comes out to Persley. He throws up a wild one, but it goes in. Nice body control in the air. It's 6-4. Charlotte. Hawkins, another shot. A miss. Rebound by Persley. The Plonky to West. Here go the Niners. Oop. Dolly oop. No good. Mango will run. Holds it back out. Charlie doing a great job of getting back on defense so far. They'd like to show people there's another quality basketball program besides the North Carolina Tar Heels in this state. Or two. Inside goes Mango. Back out to Trippy. Inside it goes to Luke Jackson. The spin around jumper, and it's good. I do believe it will count in the foul on Cedric Ball. His first, one of the things Bradley's been missing is that baseline scoring as Jeff Mullins is going to get his first player off the bench. Jeff Mullins still looks good. I remember at his basketball card as a youngster. Yeah, he played, the, the people down here say he still suits out and can still shoot him in. Yeah. He still fire him away. Here's Jackson. Oh, Luke looked good on that one. Coming in and sh shooting 19%. 4 out of 21 make it 5 out of 22 for him. The three-point play makes it 7-6 Bradley. Wide open. Trap. Oh, that's a way to beat the trap. Wide open. Byron Dinkins. A steal by Charlotte. Hawkins gets it. Inside it goes to Trippy. Super pass by the Hawkins. Nice play, and Bradley leads 9-8. Great recognition by Hawkins, as you notice. Trippy saw him, and it was two. Charlotte had no problem with that trapping defense. It happens after a free throw. Dinkins. Oh. Guard him too close, you'll get burned. There's the jump shot. The miss. Hawkins. The manual. It's three on one. Hawkins with an easy lay-in. Make it 11 to 8 Bradley. Number one scorer in the nation. Number one assist man in the nation. Team up for the deuce. 14 minutes and 15 to play here in the first half. Charlotte, North Carolina. Dinkins, a little bitty fellow who likes to go inside. As you see there, another miss. Jackson with the impressive rebound. And they get Luke with the travel, bringing the rebound down. By the time uh, they called it, he was at half court. Well, checking in, Ronnie Bellamy, number 23. You saw him for show, and he checks in for Cedric Ball. Bellamy is the half-brother of former NBA great Walt Bellamy. Another That's interesting a, story. A body that looks like it should be up on blocks. I tell you, muscles. I'm sure he'll get the ball. He's an inside player. And as Frank said, he can bang with the best of them. Dinkins to Plonky. Over to West. Personally, he's played all the way so far. Only one substitution for both teams. And he's got a big lineup in there with both Powell and Jackson on the baseline. The juke step inside goes Dinkins. Boy, that was awfully nice. Make it 11 to 10, one point game. That's four for Dinkins. Hawkins has six in their duel. Inside the turnover. Hawkins looking for the break inside. Nothing transpired. Yes, transpires it into two. He's played a fabulous first half so far. He has six points, averaging ten. But he's their assist guy, usually. Percy Hawkins, that's two. Give him two. Bradley back in the lead. Here we go. The seesaw has started. Hawkins with eight. And Anthony Manuel gets called for the reach. Anthony's trying to guard Dinkins very close. And Dinkins is so quick. 
He can take advantage when you get just too close to him. And he'll take a break. You talk about a stamina. Dinkins will sit down into the game now. Reggie Barnes, number 20. That's the problem with the Dinkins. Last year, Frank, over the course of the season, he lost 20 pounds. He had mononucleosis as a freshman, and that is a sophomore. Some of the people said they wondered if he had a nutrition problem of some sort. He doesn't have many weaknesses on the court. He averages only about 30 minutes a game. There's Hawkins with a steal. There he goes. Easy lay-in for the Hawk. No problem. 15 to 12, and Hawkins is putting on a show for the folks here in Charlotte and the NBA scouts on hand. Prime time player. West inside. The pass batted away. Donald Powell. There goes Manuel. Leading the break. To the right he goes. Over to Trippy. Wide open to three. In and out. Charlotte with the rebound. This is Barnes. The first lead. Barnsky. The big guy inside the fadeaway. Look nice on that one. Bradley leads by one now. His first two, he averages a dozen. Anthony Manuel, three, it's good. Another three, 18-14. The tempo has now swayed back into Bradley's favor. Hawkins up top playing good D. That's what the pro scouts like. He's not one-dimensional. He can do it all. Bellamy, long jumper, and he nearly gets the bounce in and out. Jackson, another rebound, wide open, Donald Powell, that's going to be oh. a five, slam a jammer, 20 to 14, Donald Powell looked there like the Donald Powell we knew last year. No evidence of the sprained right ankle there, he went soaring for a backwards tomahawk slam. We talked to Marty Gillespie before the game and he said it was just a matter of what Donald Powell wanted to do, it's up to him. Sometimes he's up, sometimes he's not. The foul inside on manual, foul trouble for Anthony, that's his second. He better take it easy. 11 minutes now and 19 seconds to play. Adding. It's one on Manuel. All the okay. starters have a foul oh. now. The first foul, we gave that last foul to Manuel, and apparently they gave it to Trevor Trippi. So it's a timeout now on the floor. Bradley with a six-point lead and looking pretty good. Here's the shot. Watch ball, 44. Mm. Kind of sandwiched between Powell and Trippy, and he got called for the foul. Matter of position, the referee on the spot. Here's Manuel against Dinkins. Trevor Trippy on the wing inside to Hawkins, who is wide open again. Hawkins goes inside for another bucket. It's a five-point Bradley lead. Ten minutes to play now in the first half. Marty Blake was talking about Hawkins playing center in high school. He's a comfortable player inside or out. That interview with Marty Blake, chief of the NBA scouting, will come up at halftime. The pass inside, stole away by Jackson. Bounced back in the hands of Charlotte. Here's Plotky, the big guy, not shy to shoot, as you can see why. It's now a three-point Bradley game. Charles staying with him. Hawkins on the other end, tipped away. Out of bounds, Bradley will maintain control. For the 49ers, number 10, Dan Bannister, a 6'7 freshman from Minneapolis, with a 41-inch leap, is in the ballgame. One of the top players in Minnesota last year, and Jeff Mullins out recruited the folks up in that part of the country. Here's Hawkins, really working well without the ball. They put Bannister in to guard Hawkins. They're going to substitute a little more tonight. Jackson inside of the block by Bellamy, but he got part of the arm and the foul on Bellamy. Ronnie Bellamy, his first foul. We'll take a look at it. Jackson gets the ball on the low block and comes in with the body. Mm, Ronnie Bellamy, 6'7 and 215. From that angle, it did not look like a foul. The referee up top called it, so apparently he had a better angle. Jackson, in his first free throw tonight, misses his second. Of course, Luke, uh, well-documented story, having his problems from the free throw line. Four out of 21 coming in, now five out of 23. 19%. And two out of three tonight, it looked good on that one. Bradley shooting 50%, 49ers 40% first half. Here's the... Trapping defense, no problem this time. Last time they burned Bradley for an easy layup. Last three games Bradley's had, they shot 33% in the first half, not this one so far. There's Dinkins, the only school that recruited the Dink was UNC Charlotte. There's the spinning jump shot to miss. 
Quanti with a board, the foul. He'll go to the line for two. The foul's on Trevor Treppy, and that would have counted. Quanti, who comes to the free throw line, was... Well, actually, they called a foul before he went up, so they'll take it out of bounds underneath the hoop. Paul Wilson checks in for Bradley now. Trevor Tripp will take a rest. USC Charlotte. Paul Wilson had a necklace around his neck. USC Charlotte sets up the inbounds play now. The crowd booing. Obviously, they uh, didn't like the, uh, uh, something that happened along the baseline. The referee pointed at, uh, at Thomas and uh, Wilson. They started to boo. We're not sure why. Quanti with two. 60% shooter from the field. It's a two-point Bradley lead. 8.46 on the clock. Hawkins. And this. Donald Powell, the offensive board. He wants to show the NBA scouts he is a good player as well. That was a force on the inside. He's a shot blocker, long arms, good jumper. Last year at this time he was averaging 20 points, 10 rebounds. This year well documented his weight problems, all that stuff. He wants to come back. Oh my! That's the freshman Dan Bannister to follow. Sensational! He talked about that 41 inch leap. There was an evidence there and he could have dunked it with his elbow. Oh my! A young man who hasn't seen much playing time and he might be seeing more. Hawkins inside. This ball. Charlotte has a chance to tie with eight minutes to play. Dinkins. Quanti. The foul. On Quanti. Donald Powell knows Paul Wilson had position, they say. Foul. Foul is on Quanti. They got him for running over Wilson. And talk about a mismatch. Quanti, 220 pounds or so. Well, Paul Wilson, they say 180 pounds. I don't believe it. And he got flattened. We'll be back. Bradley holding on to a two-point lead. You belong, and this is the man to see. He's more than a banker. He's a better banker, and he understands your special needs. It doesn't matter whether you own a farm, your own business, or want a new car. When you need a loan, you'll get better service and better rates at a better bank. Need a loan? Better see a better banker. Because after all, better people make better banks. Bartonville, Wyoming, Glassford, Dunlap, Astoria, and Hopedale. Members of FDIC. Family tradition continues. Hi, this is Duchess. My 1988 Beretta GT that I bought for Bob Brim Chevrolet. Our family have always bought Chevys for Bob Brim Chevrolet for a long time. And I figured my mom can buy a Chevy from Bob Brim, so can I. And I've had exceptional good quality in this car, and I love it. And I'm very extremely satisfied. Thanks, Bob. Bob Brim Chevrolet, good morning. This was the last play. Frank, what do you think? I don't think Paul Wilson really got there and was set, but in my opinion doesn't count. Rich Eichhorst does, and he liked it. Yeah, he's the Missouri Valley official. Gave the nod that time to Bradley. You have to be set for a full second, at the very least, and he wasn't that time. But, as you say, he's the man on the court. He's the man who makes the call. Field goals, Bradley leading 52 to 43 percent as Jeff Bullens tries to figure out how to tie the game. He's only two down at the eight-minute mark. And this is a game that, right now, Bradley has liked the tempo the last seven or eight minutes much better than they liked the first three or four minutes of the game. Stan Albeck drinking another Diet Cola. <laughs> he goes through a few of those during a game. Long time habit of his. Anthony Manuel brings it up against the Dink. Hawkins inside, posting up Bannister. Oh, Donald Powell, another offensive board. Wilson, the foul, another miss. Here comes Dinkins. Dinkins on the break. He'll pull up. He'll connect. A two-point shot, and it's tied now. Seven and a half to play. Back goes Hawkins. Donald Powell. Whoa, misses the jam. Charlotte will try to take the lead. Hawkins tipped that ball to Powell. It would have been a spectacular play, but Powell missed the stuff. Donald Powell just not quite there. His timing's just not quite there. Last year, I think he would have had the slam. 
Clouds in the game now. Dinkins, the miss. Pow, the nice defensive board. And they call the foul on number 23, Ronnie Bellamy. The muscle man who Frank talked about. Give Miles some credit. He's made a real positive contribution to Bradley since he's come in the game. And Jeff West returns for the 49ers, the 6'3 junior from the great town, Bermuda Run, in North Carolina. Here goes Bradley trying to regain the lead. Seven minutes now on the clock. Paul Wilson up top. Anthony Manuel. Pow. Posting up Bellamy down low. Whoa, Anthony Manuel, the high archer, way up there, and it's a two-point Bradley lead. Five points for Anthony. Dinkins over to West. That was a good example. They jump out and help on Dinkins. Dinkins, the miss inside, and the offensive foul on the dink. It's going to be a charge on Dinkins. Bradley's getting help. Whenever he comes off the screen, a man jumps out. Was Wilson there? That time he was there. The last time, I don't believe Paul was there. But it's so close, boy. What a tough call. Nevertheless, Paul Wilson now goes to the line for the one and one. We'll also see UNC Charlotte clear a side of the court out for Dinkins because he's so quick. They like to take him one on one. And he can, that first step is really something. The Tar Heels is a big winner tonight. The crowd here loves it. They beat Fordham. And it was an overtime win, 76-67. Both teams in the bonus situation right now. Paul Wilson saw his longest stint of the season against ISU last Monday. And a bad miss. Way off Powell, the offensive board, the block inside Powell again. And the foul on West for the reach. Powell's piling up on the 49ers as Bradley a little quicker and stronger to the ball in the first half. Donald Powell being very scrappy, hustling here in the first half. And he's getting some minutes. Uh, he's averaging 8.3 points a game for less than 20 minutes a game. He's battling underneath the hoop. Here's the one and one. Good for Donald Powell. It's a three-point Bradley lead. 6.31 now on the clock. Luke Jackson getting a rest now while Wilson and Powell are in there. Donald, two out of two, looked great. 57% from the line this season, but he looked good on those. It's a four-point Bradley lead. The trap, 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court. Always after a free throw. Now they sag back to the man-to-man -man defense. It's Paul Wilson on Dinkins up top. Percy Hawkins guarding Dan Bannister, who's 6'7 down low. This is Percy back out to Dinkins, who handles the ball most of the time. 15 on the shot clock. Inside to Plonky, who battles with Powell and beats Powell. And it's a two-point game again. Nice move by Plonky. He really set the post well, got it down there, and got eight points. Hershey Hawkins looking for the shot inside. He goes to steal by Jenkins. And they call the offensive foul on Hershey Hawkins. That would, be the, that would be the second. Look at Paul McCone. <laughs> Did a lot of offensive fouls in this first half. Here's this one. Hershey Hawkins going in, and they say Bannister had position. Hmm. Well, he had got, dropped that shoulder. Yeah, you're going to get the call against you most of the time. Jenkins, look at the little guy work. Juking and jiving, and he goes. The miss. Rebound by Persley. Another guy chiseled out of stone, and the shot goes up. It's over, and the foul on Donald Powell. Good shot of Donald underneath. A lot of banging going around. An aggressive game so far, and it could be the reason, Frank, could be the fact that uh, Dusty Rhodes, some of the wrestlers were here today talking to the team during the shootout, and maybe they got told them something about being aggressive. I'll tell you, there's a lot of wrestlers, pro wrestlers here today. We had a lot of fun with Dusty Rhodes, and he's a big basketball fan out oh. of Texas State. Yeah. Magnum PA. Yeah. He, <laughs> Dusty Rhodes said, uh, I know Bradley. I, I don't know. I've watched that play. He's here. Two out of two. It's a tie ball game now. And Hawkins looking for the shot. 
Good drive baseline. Gets cut off. Good help defense by Show. Anthony Manuel will shoot for three. And it's good. They did not give him three. His foot apparently on the line. So it's a two-point Bradley lead. 5-13 to play. Seven points for Manuel. Hawkins with a dozen. West. Up top to Dinkin. Who moves well without the ball. A little scatterbug out there. West. From three. Good. Three points for West. Todd Charlotte Reed. Back to Hawkins. Who gives Bradley the lead again. 33-32 Bradley. That's the Braves' tempo. A three and an answer. All in two seconds. Markey. This is Dinkins. West on the wing. Who said West was in a shooting slump on well, for five games, he was 11 for 34, not tonight. And now he's scorching him. Dinkins, the shot. This has got a three for two. But it gives UNCC the lead again. Back comes Hawkins on the break. Twice they beat it back. Hawkins gets tied up. Three Bradley seconds by Wesson Bradley. Mm. Boy, I wish we could see Bradley there, Stan. Look at that expression. Jeff Mullins, hey, great call, right? Eh? Mullins says great. <laughs> Stan says, how can he do that? Of course, Jeff Mullins, Stan Alpeck know each other very well from the NBA. Here's Dinkins. Back out the first one. This is West. Good dink. That's what they call him here in Charlotte. Parky, the big guy in the middle, the turnaround jumper. The miss. Hawkins will lead the break. Back out to Manuel. Looking up. Glad they could take the lead here. Hawkins again, wide open. They're not covering Hawkins, as you might expect, but he misses. Charlotte can go up by at least three. Now they're going to be a little bit more deliberate. Three and a half minutes to play in the first half. Hockey inside, the miss. Oh, there's that looper again, Mr. Bannister, and he just missed the follow. Wilson for three. Good. Two-point Bradley lead. Second three for Bradley in the game. Manuel the other. Monty up top. He'll shoot from there if you give him a little room. Jenkins will shoot from anywhere at any time. Bonke sets a tough post down in there. His coach calls him plain vanilla, but he's a hard worker, and he really likes it. There's the move. Inside, oh! The fancy move, and he caught Bonke a little flat-footed. Not a very good pass by Mr. Dinkins. And the timeout of the floor. Did Jeff Mullins, he called that, didn't he? Mullins with a timeout, so Charlotte will talk it over. Bradley with a two-point lead. Why not try something revolutionary for lunch? Ground beef, lettuce, cheese, and a little imagination. Introducing the new Soft Taco Supreme from Taco Bell. With tomatoes and sour cream. Look, you can try something different or become another statistic. The new Soft Taco Supreme. Now get a Soft Taco Supreme for only 99 cents at Taco Bell. For years, the people of Central Illinois have been telling you about Pekin New Car Dealers. We looked in Canton and Peoria and Pekin and finally decided to buy a car at Pekin. We negotiated uh, for the very best points. Isn't it time you found out for yourself? For the best selection, best service before and after the sale, and the best price, look no further than the Pekin New Car Dealers. They have what you're looking for, and they have it for less. Doug Bell along with Frank Cassoni here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Frank, a lot of folks back home probably wondering, hey, what kind of city is Charlotte? Uh, it's big enough to have an NBA team. They start next season. They do. The uh, Hornets, uh, Charlotte Hornets, will have a new 24,000-seat arena. And this is quite a city. They call it the city of the trees. We saw some of them here tonight. <laughs> By the way, for basketball fans in Peoria, Micah Bingaman, Peoria sure. Emanuel, plays here at UNC Charlotte. They're on the road, unfortunately, playing a game in South Alabama. And coming by to say hello to Peoria fans, Mark Freidinger, 
from Pekin, who's now at the Indiana Pacers. George Shaheen stopped by to say hello to the friends back in Central Illinois. Lots of Bradley fans here, too. Yeah, here at the Coliseum. Some say the Coliseum may be knocked down next season when they go into the new arena. 25,000 seats. The NBA team will play there. These guys will play there. And this legendary arena may be bulldozed over. And the new one will probably be an NCAA regional site with all those seats. And, of course, this place is hosted a few NCAA regionals. Donald Powell inside, and the foul on Persley. Powell, good line for two. Hit his last two, and he could give Bradley a four-point lead. Nice pass by Hawkins here. Cool. Came out of nowhere. Two shots for Donald Powell, who's a 58% foul shooter, and there's another look at Hawks' pass on the baseline. Great expression on Mr. Percy there, who knew he had the foul, it was going to be the easy hoop. And that bounce pass was the key, too. It had to be the bounce pass that was there. And a good foul. Powell misses the first one. The best he can do is get one to give Bradley a three-point lead. There you see the numbers. And misses. A very good foul by Persley. Charlotte with the rebound. They can tie it up or go ahead with a three. 2.23 on the clock. Dinkins. Bellamy. They got the side cleared out for Dinkins. All the other players are on one side of the court for the 49er. Michael Jordan does that occasionally with the Bulls. The old clear out play. There's the foul on Paul Wilson. Personally goes up. Gets hammered. You mentioned Michael Jordan, and today, after hearing of the death of Pete Maravich, when we heard that yesterday, Stan Albeck said, you know, Pete, in a way, was a white Michael Jordan, and uh, he was always a guy that, that had a showtime in basketball, and there was a, a moment of silence for a North Carolina native, Pete Maravich, and uh, certainly that was a shock to us in the basketball world. Shocking news it was. Sad news. And there's Kersley. With the first win, making it a one-point Bradley game. Trevor Trimpey takes a seat. Jerry Thomas back in. Played the first couple of minutes of this half and then took a seat. Trimpey has two fouls. Hawkins with two. Two out of two. It's a tie ball game. Two minutes to go now. Two minutes to go. All tied up here in Charlotte. Anthony Manuel for three. He gets it. A three-point Bradley lead. Manuel looks like he did against Loyola in the second half. Ten for Manuel. Smooth as silk. Marty Gillespie, who we talked to before the game, he feels strongly Manuel and Hawkins are the best guard tandem in the country. People forget Manuel scores almost 20 a game. Bellamy inside. Pretty play. Nice turnaround. Bellamy cuts the lead to one. Nice soft touch by Bellamy. There's Hawkins. Back out to Manuel. Wilson. Oh, nice fake by Donald Powell. He's up with the miss. That's a shame. Great fake by Mr. Powell. There you go. The break for Charlotte. Who says they can't run? West. Over to Persley. Who answers? Yes, that is spring music, as they say. It's 40-39 of Charlotte Lee. Manuel gets called with a push. You saw it, folks, I do believe. Jenkins playing tough D. Manuel with a forearm shove. We'll have a replay. And the foul call on Manuel. That's important because there's 58 seconds to go, and now Bradley's guards both have two fouls. Manuel second. Manuel felt he was being leaned on by Dinkins, and he was just basically warding him off to take the pass. The referee on the spot felt it was a little too aggressive. And Anthony couldn't wait for shooting practice to get over to say hey to Dusty Rhodes, so <laughs> that was definitely an atomic elbow <laughs> he threw there. Yeah, all the players enjoyed uh, getting to talk to the uh, professional wrestlers. Dinkins, the free one. A two-point Charlotte lead. We were hoping to have Dusty at halftime, but we had to tape the wrestling show they do here in Charlotte tonight. Again, two out of two. UNC Charlotte now with a three-point advantage under a minute, first half. A few turnovers. A few missed free throws. Uh, now Dinkins with two fouls, six down. Under a minute now. Manuel coming up. 
Carl Wilson on the wing. Hawkins, nice pick by Powell underneath. He didn't pick the shot. Hawkins up, flying through the air with the greatest of ease, and Bradley cuts it to one. Nice play by Hawkins, even though that was tough defense by Jeff West. You'll hear Marty Blake coming up at halftime. Talk about Hersey Hawkins and where he'll be drafted in the NBA draft. 16 for Hawkins, front official. 20 seconds now to go. No shot clock. 17 seconds inside the Plonky. And a steal by Wilson. Quick hands. Oh, overthrows Hawkins and it's Kersley. 10 seconds now. You see the clock in the right-hand corner. There goes the shot. The bounce. The follow by Bannister. And Charlotte takes a three-point lead going into halftime, and that was the guy Frank you said as the 41-inch vertical lead. He's a good one. I tell you, we're going to take a break here from Charlotte, North Carolina. Coming up after the break, Terry Scott will join you from the news desk in Peoria, and then we'll be back here with a special guest. So please stay with us. Remodeling your bath? See Hamptons. Nobody has more and more left vanities, more medicine chests, more lights, and more marble tops. All at factory direct prices. For the best selection and the best price, see Hamptons. The best for less, every, every day. Baldy is going to change the way you buy a car forever. I'm talking about Baldy Oldsmobile Cadillac. That's right. Bushman is now Baldy Oldsmobile Cadillac on Baldy's Auto Row and Pekin. And we're going to give you deals and service you've never dreamed of. Don't pay $26,000 for a Cadillac sedan to build. Don't pay $16,000 for an old Delta 88. Baldy Oldsmobile Cadillac is going to mark the prices down so they hit the ground. So come see us. Remember, Baldy Oldsmobile Cadillac is going to change the way you buy a car forever. People don't believe our prices until they shop us. Then they keep coming back. I have bought from potato peelers to drapery fabric, microwave, poison art. I buy things for my car. I buy things for my wife. I buy cardio. I buy lumber, rugs. The top brands at true discount prices shop you at that. Get it for me. Well, the buys are just incredible. UFS, where the savings are for real. Now, Bard Optical will give you two ways to save at one low price. First, save on your exam, soft contracts, and glasses for just $129 complete. You can see the best. Well, here's another way to save. Get your exam, single vision glasses, and sunglasses for just $129 complete. Get professional eye care and quality eyewear and save two ways at one low price. And Audio Banks and those unpredictable little ads are on the move again. Join the fun weekdays at 3.30 on TV19. Good evening. Here's a look at some of the stories coming up after the Bradley game. A long-standing feud in Peoria could be over tonight. Members of the city's largest union are deciding whether to drop charges of unfair labor practices. Canton city leaders say there are now two businesses interested in buying the Canton Industrial Corporation. City leaders say talks are still in the early stages. Our biggest concern has always been that whoever comes in will maintain jobs and employment within the confines of that facility, be it Canton Industrial Corporation or an, another new name. Canton has a vested interest since it loaned the company $800,000. Eyewitness News has learned that Walmart will soon have a stake in the city of Peoria. The Joseph Company has a news conference next Wednesday to talk about its development behind the Bob Evans restaurant. Walmart says it's negotiating with the Joseph Company but is not ready to talk details. However, sources tell us it will be the anchor store in the planned shopping area and it will be the first Walmart store in Peoria. In HealthCast tonight, we'll tell you how you can dress an infant in the chilly temperatures. Doctors say too much clothing can cause a child to overheat. Join us for all the news, weather, and sports after the Bradley game. For great personal service and low everyday prices, check the lineup at your neighborhood True Value hardware store, where the January bargain of the month is the Taylor 6-inch dial window thermometer. The bold numerals tell you the outdoor temperature, and the adjustable bracket makes it easy to install. In January, get the Taylor 6-inch dial window thermometer for just $1.69, where you see the banner at participating True Value hardware stores. Pages Plus Public.
published by Donnelly Directory. Shop here and shop. Help! For everything tomorrow's champions need today, Ameritech Pages Plus, published by Donnelly Directory. Shop here and shop a winner. Toyota Quality. It's a tradition that keeps growing stronger year after year. Number one in its class for customer satisfaction, the Toyota Tercel. The most trouble-free car sold in America. The Toyota Cressida. The best-selling 4x4 compact truck. Toyota. The number one compact truck sold in towing capacity and payload. Toyota. And they're all sold at a first-class dealership. Peoria Toyota Volvo. Who could ask for anything more? From the day it opened its doors, Peoria's first and oldest bank has been a symbol of guidance and security. Through good times and bad times, the First National Bank of Peoria has continued to serve the people of our community, offering a wide range of financial opportunities. Whether it be checking, savings, loans, trust services, or retirement plans, you can count on the first for all your banking needs. The First National Bank of Peoria, now serving you at three convenient locations. It's been a fun season for the Bradley Braves and their leading scorer in All-American, Hersey Hawkins. You know, wherever he goes on the road, pro scouts are always close behind. Standing next to me now, Gene Littles of the Charlotte Hornets, one of the new NBA franchises that will be around next year. And Gene, uh, you're here, your hometown, but you're watching the Hawk tonight. And tell me, uh, could he be a first-round draft pick? Could he be maybe your pick, the eighth or ninth pick? Well, there's always a possibility. I'm sure he's going to be a first-round pick. He's having an excellent year, at bar and injuries, he, he's going to be a top pick in this coming draft. And where we pick, which will be eighth or ninth, he could be there because at this point uh, in the season, he's one of the premier guards in the country. Now, today I talked to you at shooting practice, and you saw him for the first time in person, and you thought Hersey was a little bigger. Yeah, I did. He plays so big. I've been watching films. I've had scouts out looking at him. Of course, we take Marty Blake's reports, and Marty thinks he, he's one of the best players in the country. And watching him on film, I agreed. And then when I saw him in person this morning, I, I thought maybe he was a little bigger. But I still like his size. He's got a, he's got a good body weight. Uh, he looks good, and he gets really up and accelerates on his shot. Now, when you're an expansion team, I guess you naturally are looking for a bigger man to build the whole organization around. But Hawkins would be uh, the next best thing, when you say? A nice oh, yard? Yeah, yeah we, we talk, uh, Carl Shea and I have talked about what we take. Will we take a big player and usually you build a franchise with a center if you can find one. We know there's only going to be two or three top centers in the, in the draft this year, so that makes him a little more valuable. So maybe we will uh, look at taking the best player available, and that could be Hawkins. All right, that's Gene Littles of the Charlotte Hornets. Now let's speak to the man who uh, kind of oversees all these scouts. Marty, right, step on in here. Marty Blake, a fellow everybody recognizes, and all the people in Central Illinois want to know, is Hersey Hawkins going to be a number one draft pick? Well, he'll go in the first round. Uh, I came down to, not really to see Hershey Hawkins. I had a meeting with Charlotte, and I've seen him play. And, uh, we've invited him to play in the Orlando uh, All-Star Tournament, which is the premier postseason tournament to play for Gene Keaty's team. Uh, I had heard that Hershey said that uh, basically that he's been handicapped the last couple of years because of lack of coaching, <laughs> and I was trying to figure out where Stan Allback was, and somebody said he was coaching at Bradley, and since Stan's been a friend of mine for 30 years, I thought I would come up into this beautiful but cold city, and uh, I never would get to Peoria to see you play because it's cold, and I have a I have a premise on not seeing, but seriously, he's, he's one of the three or four best guards in the country. It's no question that he'll go in the first round. Where he'll go is, at this point, it's very hard to say because a year ago, nobody ever heard of Scotty Pippen, but, yeah. but myself, and I brought him to all the tournaments, and Scotty wound up being a lottery player. Well, she's a big-time player. We knew him about... Him, uh, did he go to Westinghouse? Was that where he went? He was, he was a center in high school. I think it's to, uh, to Stan's credit, Dick Forsace's credit. They recruited him. Uh, he's got a gift. He's a great offensive player, but I don't think people realize the, uh, the vast difference between pro and college ball. Remember, Hobson of Ohio State was rated the number one big guard, and he's struggling. He'll be a good player. I think mean, Hawkins is a better player than, than Hobson. It'll take a year or two, but he's going to be a big-time pro scorer, and uh, I look forward to watching him. 
Marty, you just made about, oh, 25, 30,000 people in central Illinois awful happy with that recommendation. I didn't know there were 25 or 30,000 people <laughs> in central Illinois. I'm only kidding. I, I, I can remember once, uh, uh, well, not once, but many times going up to see the Peoria Caterpillars play, and as you probably know, I was a general manager of the St. Louis Hawks for 20 years, so I have a lot of friends in Illinois, and outside of the weather, it's a great place to live. All right, Marty, thanks a lot. Maybe that figure was 250,000. A lot of people watch the games. All right. We'll throw it back now, and we'll see you at the start of the second half in a moment. The Price Leader makes a new pickup more affordable. Just arrived, brand new 1988 Rangers with $500 cash rebate, budget priced as low as $62.95. And our full size F 150s are priced to roll with $500 rebates, they're only $81.99. Take your choice, a 1988 Ranger for only $62.95 or a full size F 150 for as little as $81.99. Either way, you save more money at the Truck Leader, John Deere's Ford Studio Ruger, your number one Ford dealer. Bannister shows that he belongs in the land of the Giants with a slam dunk as the 49ers lead 44 to 41 over the Braves. It's become a habit, Bradley, being behind at halftime, Frank. In the last three games, they've been behind. Of course, they were fortunate enough to win at Dayton and Loyola against Illinois State. Not so fortunate. So, you know, the formula Bradley has used in the second half in the successful games has been the half-court or three-quarter court zone trap press, which has hurt the other team and turned the ball over, and also the play of their guards, Manuel and Hawkins, who have led the scoring. Remember, in one of the games, Hawkins had, had the, uh, or Manuel had 37 points. UNCC, a revival of sorts. Jeff Mullins came in here and really has done a tremendous job. He really has. Mullins has the, not only the campus, but the community all excited about this program. Again, as we mentioned, 1,907 people was the average before he got here. And he started at 8 and 20, but he had them rolling. And uh, he's got them 8 and 2 right now. And this is an old ABA town, the Carolina Cougars. And there's a lot of basketball fans and a lot of enthusiasm for this program right now. And he's got a good squad on his hands. And his best player, Dinkins, is about a junior. Well, Bradley is behind by three. And we'll be back to talk a little more and look over the statistics of the first half when we come back. It's coming. A magnificent celebration. It's the State of Illinois Night with the Peoria Symphony Orchestra, Saturday, February 6th. See soloist William Warfield paired with conductor William Wilson in a celebration of 90 noteworthy years. Hear selections from Porgy and Bess, a Lincoln portrait, and New World Symphony. And for the first time, a work by the winner of our Illinois Composers Competition. Experience the magic of the Peoria Symphony Orchestra's State of Illinois Night. Ring has made a New Year's resolution to sell 100 cars, trucks, and vans. Every Oldsmobile is on sale. Luxury Regency 98s are discounted over $3,000. Loaded Dell 88s are only $12,995. And Cutlass Sierras are sale price under $11,000. There are 500 cars, trucks, and vans with up to $1,500 rebates and $3,000 discounts. And we've made a New Year's resolution to sell them. Make us an offer and see how much you'll save at Uptring Chevy Olds. Remodeling your bath? See Hamptons. Nobody has more and more vanities, more medicine chests, more lights, and more marble tops. All at factory direct prices. For the best selection and the best price, see Hamptons. The best for less, every, every day. The Bradley Braves trail UNCC by three at halftime. Doug Bell along with Frank Fasoni. So far, Bradley uh, looked like midway through the first half, Frank, they were going to take charge. The running game was working great, and then all of a sudden a few mistakes, a few missed free throws, and Charlotte is now in great shape. And they got the crowd in the game, and that really helped the uh, 49ers incredibly. Both teams shot 35 times and made 17 field goals. Identical statistics from the field in the first half for the Braves and the 49ers. The free throw line, just about the same. 
both poor, three for seven for the Braves, with two out of two for Manuel, and Hawkins, an unbelievable 0 for three from the foul line after having eight for 15. There you see that free throw percentage uh, for both teams, eight out of eight for the 49ers. We had three-point shots there a second ago. It's uh, a, a good night for uh, the 49ers at the foul line, particularly personally, rebounds UNCC with a pretty good lead, 22 to 16. Turnovers are dead even. A lot of ball handling by Manuel, not many turnovers by him. UNCC winning in a couple of crucial areas there, the free throw line and the rebounding department. Bradley, of course, comes back home this Saturday, continuing Valley play against Wichita State, but boy, would they love to win this game on the road. It would really be a morale booster heading into that Saturday game against the Shockers. There's the scoring leaders. Hawkins with 8 of 15. Manuel with 4 of 6 to lead the Braves. 16 and 10 points. Three players with two fouls. Not exactly trouble, but something to watch when two of them are Hawkins and Manuel with all the minutes. Dinkins the leading scorer. Balance the key for the 49ers. Firstly with 9. Weston Bonke with 8 apiece. And Bonke has been a good post player for him. I expect to go back inside to him some more in the second half. There you see the scoring leaders, four guys getting close to double figures. That's what UNC City Charlotte does. They uh, have balanced scoring. Four guys currently average double figures last year incredibly. I've never heard of this. Six guys averaged over double figures. Sounds like the Boston Celtics. Oh boy. Jeff Mullins preaches that philosophy and boy did it ever work to perfection last season when they were 18 and 14. Just missed getting an NIT bid. Of course, right now, the folks here in Charlotte feel if they can beat Bradley tonight on national television and then do well in the Sun Belt, they may get their NCAA bid. The 49ers have lost twice. Once to the number one rated team in basketball, Kentucky, at Kentucky by three, and once to the number one Division II rated team, Florida Southern. And as we heard Marty Gillespie say on the uh, pregame interview, they were robbed in Lexington. They, they should have won. Well, they were calling it not Rupp Arena, but Corrupt <laughs> Arena after the game. Okay, here we go. Second half. Bradley with the ball. They're down by three. Same five for Bradley. The start of the game. Hawkins, Manuel, Jackson, Trippy, and Thomas. And the same five for the Niners. Dinkins, West, Plotkey, ball, and Persley. Still man to man by UNC. Inside to Hawkins. And the foul call on Cedric Ball. That's a third foul on Ball. Now when they go to a wide shot, when Bradley brings the ball back up, notice not only the press row, which is at the bottom of your screen, but also some seats, which are right in front. Those are pro scouts. Hawkins impressing the pro scouts. Makes it a one-point Charlotte advantage. Now when they bring it up, notice the heads at the bottom of your screen. You see the table. And then a bunch of folks right there at midcourt line, sitting right there, kind of like the jury at a trial. And they are 10 or 12 pro scouts watching number 33 tonight. And they're getting an early look at Dinkins, evaluating him as a junior. And some others. Plonky inside, a nice, strong move against Luke Jackson. This is what we thought they'd do. He looked like he can set that low post and get the ball in the basket. Back up comes Bradley, Trevor Trippy. 6-7, one with the ball. He can really handle it. Hawkins, the left hand. That's impressive stuff. And Bradley trails by just one. We've played a minute now in the second half. Well, Hawks got 20. 20 points. He's the leading scorer in the country. All the TV crews are out today at practice. Hawkins is the leading scorer. Firstly, the ball. West, the southpaw. This way off the mark. And the foul, the push on Persley, the referee chuckling with Persley. As if to say, don't dare argue the call. And they called it on Trumpy. Did they really? They called it on Trumpy, and that somebody smiled, and the official smiled back. It's Trumpy's third, and that's not something for Bradley's bench to smile about. 49ers keep it. Persley brings it in, and there's the battle away by Manuel. It was so obvious to me, I was watching personally, and he actually did shove Trippy. Uh, apparently, uh, I wasn't close enough to the play. The referee had position. This is West. Monkey. I got the personally. Two points, not a three, only two. It's a three point. Nine of lead. Ten for personally, who averages that. 
There's Trippy. Inside to Jerry Thomas. The turnaround jump shot. Oh, gets the bounce. And again, it's back to a one-point advantage. First two for Jerry Thomas. We've played two minutes now in the second half. 18 to go. Inside, Parkey. Dan Parkey. Very nice touch. Good player. Three-point lead again. 63% field goal shooter, too. From Dubuque, Iowa. 6'8", 220-pound senior, Dan Parkey. Trippy up top to Manuel. They're glad to use that half-court trap and get a run in this second half. The formula they've used. Jerry Thomas, the jump shot. This time he misses, and Mr. Parkey a rebound. He's been all over the board. Jenkins. Oh, Just oh my. Oh, Charlotte will maintain possession. What a fake, Frank. Uh, you talk about the old shake and bake stuff. I mean, he came flying down the court and in midair. He gave the pump fake with the ball. The Bradley defender went for it. Watch this pump fake. Rip it. Hello. Our mouths both drop simultaneously on that one. Slow motion does not give it justice. Trumpy's limping. There you can see it as he goes to the sidelines. Looks like he hurt maybe his right leg or ankle. Bradley does not need an injury to Trevor Trippi or anybody at this point. They are not the deepest team in the world. West, the three. That's three points, and it's now a six-point Charlotte lead. 17 minutes to go. Hawkins answers with a three of his own. Back to a three-point game. Big shot by Hawk. A six-point lead melts to three with one firing shot like that. This is West. And a great game. Super pass. Bellamy in the game. Misses. Got tripped a bit. No call, Manuel. Over to Hawkins, who will shoot the three. In and out. Here comes Dinkins. Offensive board for him. He loves it that way. Doesn't have to pass to anybody. Send out of West. Clonky. Clonky, the nice move, just does not get the bounce. Wilson, the rebound. Here we go with Anthony Manuel. The three. The miss. Thomas, the rebound. That guy goes Jerry. Too strong. Who else but Hersey Hawkins on the spot? How many? Bradley's uh, answer with five quick ones. Hawkins with, uh, let's see, 16, then 20, now 25. The Hawk count. 25 big ones. 16th fence to play. Dinkins up. Jackson thought he had the ball. Jackson did get the ball, but he got part of Dinkins, too, and he came jumping out on the help on this quick Byron Dinkins. Have not heard much from Luke on the offensive end tonight. There it is. And the slap. Luke doesn't shoot much, of course. He's Bradley's leading rebounder. Dinkins 88% from the line for the season. Two out of two tonight. Two out of three now. First miss of the game for Charlotte. They were perfect in the first half. Eight out of eight. Three out of four for Dinkins. Bannister, the jumping jack, checks in. He's the guy who had the slam dunk in the first half. Checks in from Bellamy. Sixteen minutes now. And counting. Hawkins on the drive. Spinning move. Batted up in the air. And Jerry Thomas comes out with it. Manual. Jackson was wide open. They couldn't get it to him. Wilson thinks about it. Bradley will take over 38 seconds on the shot clock. And we have our first timeout, TV timeout of this second half. Bradley trails by two. Stan Albeck will plot some strategy, and we'll be back. For the past 18 years, Vince's Pizza in Morton has brought the taste of Italy home. Come in and enjoy Vince's all-you-can-eat smorgasbord with authentic Italian dishes. There's mouth-watering pasta, homemade breads, piping hot pizza, and much more pure Italian goodness. It's so mouth-watering good, you'll come back for more and more and more. So come to Vince's Pizza in Morton and experience Italy like you never have before. Hi, this is Vince's Pizza. Come in over and try one of my pizza. Thank you very much. Farmers who switched to Eradicane are getting better grass control. Isn't that right, Gary? I did an excellent job controlling their grasses. Mainly foxtail is our big grass problem. And 
are very happy with the Radicaine. How about you, Alan? I watched my neighbor uh, putting on Radicaine with his fertilizer through impregnation, and uh, I tried it, and it just cleaned up my grasses really well. For better grass control than Dula Lasso, farmers like you are switching to Radicaine. It's your last chance weekend here at S&K Chevrolet. It's your last chance to get back to the dealer incentives of $1,000 on select new Cavaliers, on celebrities, and Camaros in stock. Or check this out, $1,000 cash back on select new S10 pickups or S Blazers. And full-size truck buyers, your last chance to get $1,000 cash back on select new full-size Chevy trucks. So bring your title, bring your trade, it's your last chance weekend at the top of the town, S&K Chevrolet in Peoria. Bradley Braves have put up 52 points today, Frank. 25 of those have come from Hersey Hawkins, and that apparently is Jeff Mullen's strategy. Let the Hawk do his thing, it will bog everybody else down. I think they'd like to do a little better job guarding him. It's just really tough. Of the Bradley starters, the two guards have 35 points, and the baseline has eight points. Now, Wilson and Paul have scored off the bench, but Bradley, again, is having trouble scoring along the baseline. Blanke, Hersley, Bannister have come on and helped on the baseline for the 49ers, and they had edge in the front courts there. So again, inside the paint has been a problem for Bradley. Hawkins, the jump shot, that pretty jump shot, in and out, not pretty enough, Plotky the rebound. This is Jenkins, the West. Plotky, wide open, why not? Good, it's a four point Charlotte Lee, Plotky is tearing him up. 14 for Plotky. Plotky from Iowa, as we said, played junior college ball in Arizona. Developed his skills out in Arizona, and Charlotte picked him up. Powell's going to come in and try to slow him down. Paul Wilson the fake. West, quick hand. That yeah, West impresses me, number 11. One of the things that Bradley found out against Illinois State was Illinois State was almost forcing Bradley to go inside. It was like they were putting 11 men on the line of scrimmage, and other teams will notice things like that. Paul Wilson brings it in. Luke Jackson takes a seat. Donald Powell inside. And he wants it right off the bat. Powell inside the lane. Percy Hawkins. Up with it. It's tied up. Wilson inside. Plotkey. There's that man again with another rebound. Bradley needs a defensive stop this time. Percy. On the wing. Frank Pursley back to West. Jeff West. Good that tough matchup on top here. Oh, the slap by Manuel. We could hear the slap. Manuel sure thought he did. had the ball. I could hear the skin. Indeed. Third foul on Manuel. 14, 31 on the clock. Third foul for Anthony Manuel. Stan Albeck said to me earlier, he thinks this team concentrates better on the road than it does at home, and he'll have to concentrate now on the defensive end and try to stop the 49ers with a little roll. So far, three and one on the road this year for the Braves. The only loss in Memphis, the game Frank and I attended, a great game it was, a miracle finish for the Tigers. This is West. It's knocked out of bounds, steps on the out of bounds line, and Bradley will take over. Mr. West, an interesting story, went to high school, went to military school, played some basketball there, and now he's in college. He's had a lot of experience. Wilson, from three-point range, NBA three-point range, the miss. Firstly to Dinkins, and the travel on Dinkins. And Bradley's got the ball back again, four down. They shot a three. Should have been a four, as far away as Wilson was. He was almost out of the area code. He was way out in yonder land, the stratosphere. Gee whiz, that was good 32 feet. <laughs> and you're looking for Hawk to pop out of the screen. And the foul inside. I think they're going to call Bannister, the freshman. Dan Bannister, the jumping jack, who had the slam dunk in the first half, guarding Hawkins now. Doing the best he can. It's the All-American from Bradley. Bradley's played only seven players, 49ers eight. Donald Powell wants it. We're going to get to the inside move. Pretty move by Donald Powell. Bradley's down by two. Eight for Powell. Jenkins, the Plonky. Oh, he traveled to the step. Well, Jeff 
Mullen just pe peeled the coat off. Look at this pass. Hawkins, and there's Bannister, the man with a 41 inch vertical jump. Goaltender. They give the basket to Hawkins, 27. With time, 56 up. Both sides even. 13 29 on the clock. Manuel will guard Dinkins all the way up. Dinkins looking for Plocky. Great battle between him and Powell down the wall. Watch the two big guys maneuver inside. There's Dinkins. That's a three. Three point. Nine a lead. 14 for Byron Dinkins. That's the story from Charlotte. Jerry Thomas, the turnaround, the miss. Plonky, another board for Mr. Plonky. Whoa, the juke move by Dinkins. And Manuel calls for number four. Very big call right there. Bradley's point guard with four. You'll watch him get it here. You call it at home. Byron Dinkins turned it up into another gear. Did he get there? Not according to the referee. That'll get Manuel out of the game. Should be back in for the Braves. 12.48 on the clock. That's a long time to go. Anthony Manuel, the floor general, will take a seat. Paul Wilson will bring it up. Trippy, of course, can play that point when we get down in offense. He's a good passer. Wilson might be out there a bit, too. Inside it goes, Bannister gets hammered inside. I think they'll call it on Trevor Trippi. Well, if so, that would be four. Now they're talking about whether or not there was goaltending involved or is not. They call it on Paul Wilson, or is it Powell? On Powell, Donald Powell. No basket. It's five team fouls on Bradley. Only two on the 49ers in the second half. Bannister misses that one. The freshman from Minneapolis, Minnesota. He's played in all 11 games this season for the Niners. Still a three-point lead. And it's a four-point lead. Wilson brings it up. Manuel on the bench. Hawkins works the baseline. The jumper. Oh, that's beautiful. A patented jump shot from Hersey Hawkins. It's a two-point lead again. That's what the pro scouts love. Hersey Hawkins shot. Today they compared it to Dale Ellis. Remember when we were talking to the scouts? You bet. And the other thing they like is he wants the ball with the game on the line like it is in those kinds of situations. Frank Persley to this. Monkey again inside. Another offensive board. There's the takeaway by Bradley, Jerry Thomas, Trevor Trippi. It's two on two. Thomas will go all the way to spin inside. And a block by Bannister. A jumping fiend he is. Showing it off for the sellout crowd here in Charlotte. Three on two. He'll pull it out. Charlotte a chance to go up by four. Now the crowd's back in the game. That flurry really helped. Listen. Dan Plonky, Bannister to follow. You can't say enough about the young freshman from Minneapolis. He has turned the tide here. Midway through the second half. 49ers hurting Bradley with offensive rebounding. Percy Hawkins will throw out to Paul Wilson, who will save it from going out of bounds. Wilson, working one-on-one. -on -one. He loves it. The miss, Donald Powell, a strong move, and he is fouled on Plonky. A big foul by Plonky. There he is. Powell really goes after the ball on this. Wilson slides around the man and throws it up, and Powell just really went after the ball for Bradley that time and got the foul. Oh, Wilson up in the air. Donald Powell fighting viciously for the ball, and he'll go to the line. We're going to take a timeout. 11-18 to play. You see Anthony Manuel sitting on the bench with four personals, and Bradley trails by four. If you really want the best deal, remember this. For the best quality American-made appliances, you just can't beat Whirlpool. And for the best price and free delivery, you just can't beat Meals. Meals, the king of deals in downtown Pekin.
If you're tired of sweatpants that can turn into sweat knickers after one washing and sweatshirts that can't hold up to a backyard first down, Brown Sporting Goods has the sweats you'll go for. New premium white sweats are the best ever, built by the folks who are experts at making comfortable yet rugged athletic wear. Russell Athletic sweats are heavier, thicker and softer, built tougher to last longer, and shrink less than ever. In short, we at Browns think they're the best you can buy for the money. Russell Athletic premium sweats at all Brown Sporting Goods locations. For shock struts, brakes, alignment, and mufflers, better call the pros at Plaza. If you think all we do is tires, you're wrong. Shock struts, mufflers, alignment, brakes, computer balancing. Get it done right at the right price. See the pros, Plaza Tire and Service Company, Peoria. Welcome back to the Charlotte Coliseum. Doug Bell along with Frank Fasoni. And plenty of time to play in the second half. Too early to count. 11 minutes plus. And UMC has gotten great contributions all year from Dinkins. But tonight, you have to also give credit to Plonky and West. And Bannister's come off the bench. And he's really ignited this crowd with his jumping and rebounding. Dan Bannister, the young freshman, is really showing his merit. And I think from here on out in Sunbelt play, he'll be playing quite a bit for Jeff Mullins. Good looking young player. Only a freshman. Look at this crowd. They really get into basketball in the Carolinas. They were dying for this Niner program to come back to life. It hit his peak in 77, as we said. Cedric Corn and Greg Maxwell led him to the final four. Almost even on the three-point shots. You can see the shooting is a standoff. Trippy looks inside to Luke who has not scored in a long, long time. Hawkins inside, great pass to Donald Powell, and chalk up another big personal foul. Oh no, they said a big substitution. Okay, Robson in the game for Plonky. They gave the big guy a rest. Looks like it, look at his haircut. He does, he's 6'10 and 225, he's a freshman. First from Durham, England, then from Milford, Ohio. And Jeff Mullins fouling on the sidelines. Gonna get Cedric Ball back in the game. Sam Robson, the spitting image of Ken Clarkey. And Powell with another miss. Still a four-point game. Checking in now, 44 Cedric Ball. We were told Jeff Mullins did not go deep on his bench, but tonight he's using his bench very well. He's gone eight deep tonight. The miss, two out of two. Hawkins, the big boy. Four missed free throws for Paul. Hawkins is really putting on a show. There's a one-on-one -on -one move. Good defense by Charlotte, though, and Bradley will maintain control. Hawkins wanted a foul. Got Bannister at 6'7", shadowing Hawkins, and they're trying to get help on him. Paul Wilson. Over to Trevor Trippi. Down low to Donald Powell, who goes up with it. Hawkins battling inside the strong move. And it's a two-point game again. 31 for Hawkins. Tremendous upper body strength. The scouts did say they, they were surprised when they saw Hawkins in person how small he was. But I think that move might have shown him small, but strong. He's got his hand there on that. And he's the second leading rebounder on the team. Inside it goes to Barnes. Nice offensive board and a foul inside. There's Milton. The foul on Donald Powell. With the body, great angle on that. You saw it. There's another angle. Look at this. Barnes gets it off the window. There's Donald, his third foul. Reggie Barnes goes to the line. A junior from Selma, North Carolina. Bannister. Sits down the young freshman and they love him here in Charlotte. There he is. Dan Bannister. The miss. Big board by Paul Wilson. Bradley down by four. 10-17 on the clock. Hawkins tries to save it. There's a turnover. Once again, Bradley looking for a defensive stop. Stan Albeck checks the scoreboard at 64-60 UNCC. 10-12 to play in the game. Dinkins back in the game. He had a two-minute rest. West to Barnes. Bradley's 
doubling on Dinkins, showing a little zone on him. Good hands by Wilson. Dinkins wanted the drive. Wilson wouldn't let him. Lobson, the big 6'10 kid decides to shoot. Way off the mark. Foul the rebound. Not a good shot selection for Sam Robson, and it cost him. Robson gets the foul. His first foul, just came in the game about a minute ago. Here's the replay. Inside, he gets the miss. And then goes up and slaps Donald Powell on the wrist. Paul Wilson, the junior from Lorain, Ohio, runs the show with Anthony Manuel on the bench. Hawkins really runs the show. Wilson, pretty shot. Oh, that makes it a 64-62 game. 9.23 on the clock. Wilson with five. He had a good game against the Redbirds of Illinois State. Next year when Hawkins is gone, Paul Wilson is expected to pick up the scoring slack. There's the partial block by Wilson, who goes down for the long bomb from Trippy inside to Hawkins. Beautiful play and the bat away by Charlotte. Good pass by Wilson and a good catch. Hawkins gypsy do the great dribble on the foul on the big guy. Robson, his second foul. Hawkins didn't get a free throw attempt in the first half of the game. And you'll see here on the low angle how he gets fouled. Blanky comes back in. Robson picked up a quick three fouls. He came in just to give Plonky a breather for the stretch run. He did a good job. Picked up, hammered a few people and did his job. There you saw it. 33 points matching his number for Harvey Hawkins. They get 34. Nearing his average of 37.8. Tops in the U.S. of A. 35 for Hawkins. He's an 88% free throw shooter and it's all tied up. 8.55 to play. I have Hawkins for 33. But it's academic. It's tied in 8.50. There's the steal. And there's steal by Hawkins. Good help defense. Pressure defense by Bradley who's gone into a trapping zone defense. Inside goes ball and the foul by Powell. And they're going to get the continuation hoop. They got to believe. It counts. First two for Ball, watch him pump and hold it. And the body contact and then the nice play by Cedric Ball. Donald Powell, a shot blocking specialist, went for the swipe. Too much of the body. Four fouls on Powell. Cedric Ball, a sophomore, 6'8", 210 pounds. Short on the free one. Only a 35% free throw shooter, not the best when it comes to the free ones. He's better when people hammer. Hawkins from three. Good. Ursi Hawkins is racking him up. People shaking their heads from Charlotte. What can we do to slow this guy down? And that one gave Bradley the lead by one. Hawkins is unconscious, as they say. Ball being bothered by Kyle. This is Barnes. Pretty jump shot by Barnes. The miss. That's good. Rebounding by Bradley. Powell the tip to Wilson who does a little Luke Trotter style pass to Luke Jackson. The spinning jump shot. Luke doesn't get the bounce. Charlotte back on the prowl. West. He's a southpaw. He likes it on that side. You better believe it, baby. 68-67. Charlotte. 14 for West. And Bradley seemed to forget momentarily he was left-handed. Hawkins inside. Nobody's going to guard him tonight. Off the glass. He's doing it all. And the Pro Scouts are salivating on the sidelines, telling each other, I don't necessarily like him that much because they want to get the edge when it comes to draft time. Dinkins, way out in yonder land to miss. Jackson the board. Bradley rebounding now much better than they have in the last four games. 7 12 on the clock. Wilson inside. From behind, Dinkins strips it. There goes the little guy. Whoops to Barnes. Well, I walk. Barnes just didn't make the clean catch. Dinkins was flying in the front court and got in the ball in good shape, but Barnes couldn't handle it. The pace is picking up, and Bradley loves it when it's fast. They lead by one. Jeff Owens, hey, we better slow it down. We'll be back.
Judge, it ought to be a law. When you buy an appliance, you ought to get a five-year limited warranty on parts and labor. And persons. It is the law. Do you realize how great Basic 26 is? Well, let me tell you. It's refreshing, innovative entertainment, education, information, 24 hours a day. Basic 26 is family fun on arts and entertainment, American movie classics, Nashville Network, and Lifetime. There's education and information on Discovery, Cable Value Network, CNN, children's programming on Nickelodeon, and Nick at Night. For sports fans, excitement and variety, Basic 26, affordable, 26 channels, 24 hours a day. Innovative programming, great with a VCR, different than network TV. UA Cable System, 686-2600. For most people, a new car is one of the largest purchases they'll ever make. Yet they really don't know where to start. We can help. We're Shearer Buick Pontiac Isuzu, and we've made a commitment to the right service and the right price. A commitment that's made us number one in customer satisfaction in the entire metro area. Buying a car isn't easy, but we're not in it for a quick sale. When we put our name on a car, it's our commitment to your business and your trust long term. We're Shearer. We'll show you how car buying should be. The Hawk is flying high tonight, Frank. 38 big ones. You know, it's an amazing thing. He's got 38 in the great performance, still seven minutes to play, but he's got his average. And uh, that's, that's a remarkable thing. And uh, we're checking to see he's now tied uh, the all-time valley score for fifth place with Steve Harris of Tulsa. The foul trouble. There's the foul trouble, the big one on manual. It wouldn't be very good if Donald Powell fouled out either because Plonky has eaten him up inside. Wow. Manuel, Manuel uh, Doug got his fourth foul with 12.48, so he's been out about six minutes already. And still out. Now, we're going to check this, Frank, but this morning when we were eating breakfast and checking the newspaper, that sort of thing, Crystal P. Manovich scored 49 here. The, the arena record, we do believe, when he played. Yes, yeah, as a collegiate. As a right. collegiate. As a collegiate. So we think that's the arena record, 49 by Crystal P. Manovich. We'll check on that. There's the foul inside. That's Ball's fourth foul. He's an important but not crucial player for the 49ers. Paul Wilson. Cedric Ball. Paul Wilson will go to the line. Wilson's come in and had to do something difficult. He's got Paul, of course, the line. But Wilson's had to play the point in the place of Anthony Manuel. He hasn't had that many minutes doing that this year. Powell struggled tonight from the line, and there's that man, Ball, who picked up his fourth foul, getting the rebound. Free throw. Donald was very, a very good free throw shooter last year before he broke his wrist, and it seems ever since he came back, he struggled a bit. One point, Bradley lead, 6.25 to play. Wilson guards Dinkins. That's the freshman back in. Dan Bannister. This is West, the southpaw. He's on fire. Yeah, 71 69. Give him three. The reason he was open was two, be two people were checking Dinkins. Hawkins off the pick. Wide open. He's scorching him. Red hot. Hawkins in 40. <laughs> Anthony Manuel ready to check back in. Bradley by one, 5.43 to go. Bacon's to Bannister up top. Powell's done some good work with Jackson on Bunky. They want to get him the ball. Ball inside goes up. Gets batted away by Powell, who gives him credit for a block. Wilson looking for Luke Jackson. He'll go by himself. Pretty play. Bradley by three, 5.20 to play. Big contribution for Wilson. He's now got seven. Gave Bradley a three-point advantage. But still a lot of time at 5-12. Paul Wilson. Gives Bradley hope for tonight and hope for the future. He's just a junior, folks. Anthony Manuel and him will be in the backboard next season. Dickens inside. Gets the shooter's bounce. A one-point Bradley lead. 16 for Byron Dinkins. He averages 24. Inside of five minutes now, 4.45 in county. 
Hawkins doing whatever he wants tonight. Wilson. Gets the roll. That's three for Paul Wilson. You said it. Great contribution for that man. And Anthony Manuel gets off the bench at 4.30. He's checking the scores table. This would be some kind of road victory for the Braves. Batted out of bounds. And right. back in, as you can see, number 12. The crowd not a factor at all at the moment. Somebody from the crowd tossed a piece of ice at the referee. Then the cup. Then the cup. Percy just checked in, just came in off the bench, and he threw up a clunker. There goes Hawkins. And the foul by West. Hawkins will go to the line for a one-on-one -on -one bonus. Jeff Mullins continues to chop on that gum and chop on him just a little bit harder. You know, and the three-point shot changes the game of basketball and makes it a lot longer game because you can get that lead, no matter what it is late, doesn't seem to be enough. Hawkins with one and bonus. Nice soft touch. Hawkins came in shooting 88% from the charity stripe. And there are the numbers for the All-American. Again, when Bradley needs the big bucket, he responds. It's a six-point lead for Bradley, their biggest lead of the ball game. Four minutes and five seconds to go. What a big game by Hawkins, 43. Plotke, the turnaround. Haven't heard from him in a while. We don't hear from him now. Manuel on the break. Could be an eight-point lead. Wilson for three. Make it a nine-point lead. Paul Wilson apparently taking some lessons from Hersey Hawkins is lighting it up. And Mullins knows the tempo's the wrong way and so is the momentum. He's got to stop it. Bradley playing the best they have in a couple of games and we'll be back. Nine-point Bradley advantage. Office interiors by Whitmer can maximize the potential of your office for greater productivity. Whitmer provides a complete package featuring office function analysis, interior design, space and systems planning, and installation. Client needs are skillfully integrated with elements of design, color, and the finest in office furnishings. Whitmer also designs and installs filing and finding systems, including movable shelving and rotary and automated files. A productive office requires planning. Planning by Office Interiors by Whitmer in Peoria and Bloomington. The new Accord LX four-door sedan is in at Honda World, and it's a real crowd pleaser. The LX sedan adds more standard features for comfort and convenience, such as air conditioning with bi-level temperature control, power windows and door locks, dual power outside mirrors, AM FM high power stereo system with power antennae, rich cloth upholstery, and a handy fold-down rear seat pack. See the LX sedan with an extra measure of luxury at Honda World. Doug Bell along with Frank Bassoni. We're under four minutes now. Bradley with a somewhat comfortable nine-point advantage, Frank. Never say somewhat comfortable <laughs> when you were at Memphis, Mr. Bell. But uh, oh. one thing you know you have to say about Bradley's being committed to their style of play. With 3.52 or three to go in the game, they're six points ahead, and instantly Paul Wilson fires up a three. Some coaches would leap off the bench and say, oh, no, but Wilson's shot bounced in. It's Bradley's style, and they've got a nine-point advantage now. It's funny, your comment about uh, somewhat comfortable, all sorts of people just jumped out of their lazy boys at home as soon as you said that, oh, we better, better not go to bed just yet. Well, three possessions is nine points uh, in the game now. You had to bring up the Memphis game, didn't you? <laughs> Don't worry, it crossed Stan Albeck's line already, I'll tell you that. Look where Jackson is out there. What on earth? West, the miss, he's gone cold, but Bannister back up. Jackson meets him in midair. And they call it a foul. They wanted to jump ball on that one. It would have been Charlotte's possession anyway, but he has a chance now to go to the line for a one and one. Take a look at this, see if Jackson got him. There's the banister sky, here comes the return. Ball on Luke. <laughs> you can almost hear Stan all back what he was saying. The mic picked him up from the backboard, Mike. That'll indicate this big house is quieted down a little with Bradley's run. Bannister. 
makes it an eight point game. Bannister has eight. We're under three and a half minutes now to play. Hawkins inside working against Bannister the fake. Up it goes. Hawkins is moving it. That time it didn't go in. Powell works it inside. Donald Powell, super hustle. He is alive and kicking and looks like the Donald Powell we know and love. A 10 point lead. 10 points for Powell. What they call garbage stuff. Sure. He stuff showed a little hard on that one. Now under three minutes. Watch they'll shoot threes if they can. Jenkins. Here's West. Nice bag. He wants to foul. Oh my, it almost went in. What a play by Jeff West. A lot of athletic ability. Caught the ball, knew he was going to get fouled and fired up a prayer, and it almost was answered from the corner. We knew from the start it would be a great guard matchup. Manuel Hawkins, they've gotten the headlines. But West and Dinkins, a good guard tandem in their own right. This is Jeff West, 75% from the free throw line. And that time, nothing but iron. 16 for West in the game. In the first half, the three ones went in for Charlotte. They led by four. Second half, they've gone awry, and they're down by 10. When you get the three ones late in the game, they're crucial, and Charlotte is not connecting. Big key so far. Luke Jackson up top. Handling the ball like a little guy. Percy Hawkins playing like a big man. Inside off the glass. 85, 86, 74, 225 on the clock. Percy from way out. Three connects. There's one of the threes they need. We're getting close to the two-minute mark. Manuel back in. Hawkins, he wants it. He's, he's the crunch man. He's got 45 in the game now. Foul on Dickens. Jeff Mullins couldn't believe it. Mild-mannered guy he is on the sideline, Jeff Mullins, but that time he barked his discontent. A bit of foul trouble tonight. He's in double figures. There's the free one from Anthony Manuel. Manuel is 77% foul shooter. Very good. He asked Stan Albeck a question about the defense, and Stan said no. They say Manuel and Hawkins, the best guard tandem in the country. I say let's look at Kentucky Chapman and Devin they're up there as well. Here's Dinkins, way off the mark. That's forcing a team to shoot three-pointers that's out of their style. Bradley's lead is 11. A horrendous shot. 145 now and counting. Bradley will get to shoot some free throws now. Paul Wilson. Great game for him. Hawkins inside. Too quick for Bannister. Putting on a show. It's a 13-point lead. Minute 24 to play. Don't forget, 51's the record for Bradley Player. He's got 47 on the road. There's the foul inside on Donald Powell. Oh, they call it on Hawkins. Some of these calls by the referees have puzzled me, to say the least. It's a mixed crew, Sun Belt referees, Missouri Valley. One Missouri Valley referee, Rich Eichhorst. Folks in Peoria are familiar with him. Jeff Mullen said he won the game about 75. They have 77. Bradley won 100. They got 90. There's West. Finally hits one. Breaks the ice a bit. Maybe too little too late. There's the man of the hour. The power of power. The American dream. Dusty Rhodes has me saying it, but it puts Hersey Hawkins to a T tonight. Anthony Manuel. Manuel cleared off Dinkins. There's Hawkins. Power of one minute. Inside a minute, Frank. 
with the swipe. Tied up inside, Bannister Manual. It's up, it's gonna go Charlotte's way. The arrow points the way of the 49ers. It's another possession without a shot for the Braves, so it's a 12-point Bradley lead. And you can bet the 49ers will try a three. The 49ers are a young team, no doubt about it. They will be back in the Sun Belt season. 49 seconds to play. We won't put the lid on it just yet, but we're easing it on. Oh, another tick by tick. Another problem they have, the 49ers, is they'll have to press if they can score. And Bradley's difficult to press with this lineup with Anthony Manuel in the backcourt. You have to be impressed with Paul Wilson. Came to play. He's been a key. Of course, the big man, the Hawk. Dinkins with the left hand. Makes it a 10-point game with 45 ticks left on the clock. Jeff Mullins calls timeout. And we'll go to a break and be back with a final. This is the last one. Somebody better go out. I'm not going out. America, published by Donnelly Directory. Shop here and shop sitting down. Why rip something up in a pinch when you can pick something up in a pinch with the simple use of your fingers? Ameritech Pages Plus, published by Donnelly Directory. Shop here and shop good. Hi, I'm Dean Jim. Back in 1920, when Jim's TV and Appliance first opened their doors, my grandfather, father, and uncles began to build a reputation for Grimm, offering their customers fair prices, backed by good service and customer satisfaction. That family philosophy has become a tradition at Grimm's. For value, service, and the best in RCA electronics, Grimm TV and Appliance. We'll serve you better because we care. Morton, Peoria, and Wilmington. Doug Bell along with Frank Bissoni bringing you some Bradley basketball here on Channel 19 WHOI in the heart of Illinois. Bradley enjoying a 10-point advantage as we speak, and while the young cheerleader there for Charlotte is celebrating, the team is dying a bit on the sidelines. Bradley was down 44 to 41 at halftime, and they've turned out a second half that's uh, been 13 points better than the 49ers of Charlotte. You have to be impressed with that because they were talking today in the papers here about this being a big event and a special event, national television, and there's a big house here, and Bradley has met a challenge that's a good one on the road. No doubt, Bradley will go to 4-1 on the road. 8-2 overall with Wichita in Peoria on Saturday. Our next telecast, though, will be Friday, Illinois State at home against Tulsa. The Golden Hurricanes struggling a bit, as are these 49ers from Charlotte at the moment. This is not one of Paul Wilson's long suits foul shooting with 50% on this. Uh, he hasn't shot many this season. But his 10 points tonight in three three-point shots been vital for the Braves. Thirteen points, double figures for Wilson. He scored in double figures against Illinois State on Monday. You know, Bradley's only played seven players in the game. The starting five, and then Powell and Wilson off the bench. Jeff Mullins' team will fall to eight and three on the season. Two out of two, two big ones for Paul Wilson. There's the steal by Jackson, the tip away. Hawkins involved in it. Paul Wilson inside. Give him all. Oh, Paul Wilson, the exclamation point here. They possibly finish it off a 14-point advantage. We nearly got hit right there, Frank. <laughs> Luckily not. Manuel did. He came up with the ball as the body's hit. And it's one in bonus time. That'll be his fifth foul, of course, on Anthony. Again, I'll make reference to the wrestler we met today, Dusty Rhodes. He made quite an impression on me. I've talked about him about five times. But his famous line, gotcha, baby. And I think uh, that's what Bradley is saying right now. We gotcha. Of course, he says it with a little more flair than I just said it. But uh, when you're 280 some odd pounds and big as a house, I guess... Uh, you can do it any way you want. West at the free throw line. Same big game. One. He's up 17, and Jeff West 
has returned. He's, he was at a shooting slump. He's back tonight, but 13 point lead with 25 seconds. Now is 12. Jeff Mullins has not thrown in the towel just yet. The white flag is going up the flagpole, but they're 12 points down, 25 seconds on the clock. We'll see what happens. Bradley, of course, they the best shooters in, the best free throw shooters. And what a way to come back after the loss Monday night. You saw that game, and uh, it's a psychological kind of thing uh, uh, to bounce back against a good team on the road. Uh, you know, one thing to, to uh, have a strategy and another thing to uh, pull it off, and uh, Illinois State got that done, certainly. And uh, you have to be impressed with the way Bradley bounced back from that occasion to come here tonight and concentrate. And they concentrated, went out, and they've rode a thoroughbred tonight on oh, Hersey right. Hawkins with 47 points to a lead that's comfortable enough that they should be able to win at Charlotte. Marty Blake, the NBA uh, Director of Scouting here tonight, and he said, oh, yeah, I've seen Hawkins many times. Uh, oh, he's still got to be a little more impressed after tonight. Another pro scout said to us tonight that, you know, I've gone through my, in my mind a number of players ahead of Hawkins, and after you get the five, six, or seven, you keep naming him. And I keep saying, who's the player of the year in college basketball? Uh, it's got to be one of the highlight guys. Danny Manning, of course, is up there. And sure. so forth. But I guarantee you, when they ballot, Percy Hawkins is going to get his share of votes. No doubt about that. The Hawk. Again, though, that it's that Tim Brown philosophy to foul Hawkins will go to the line. It's a matter of publicity. They're on national television. Uh, and, and Manning will be on television so much on big games, and, and he's having a sensational season. And he's the eyes on favorite, as Tim Brown was in football, to win the big award. Stan Albeck was smiling a bit there as he was looking for the intentional foul as the 49ers have to foul. Hawkins gets one and one, but he just hit it. That's 48. And for the youngsters at home, having some trouble at the free throw line, well, take a look at Hersey. Take a look at his whole game. It's a clinic. Oh. Nobody does it better, as the old song goes. Well, if he gets another basket, he'll have his mark of 51. It's fun talking about him because he's such a nice fella off the court. Donald Powell, the long one. Hawkins is going to hit a little showboating. No, Luke Jackson. Hey, big guy. You have a little fun. Five, four, four seconds now. 98-82. Bradley getting close to the century mark. They're standing up on Bradley's side. Greg Jones leading the cheer. Steve Bayless, the freshman. Mike Cash, Mordini. Jay Shell. There it is. The buzzer, Bradley, a 98-82 winner here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Stan Albeck beats his good friend Jeff Mullins. And again, Frank, a big win for the Braves. In your quest to get to the top 20, and then on from there, this is one of the important steps the team must take. Donald Powell and Paul Wilson came off the bench to contribute big numbers tonight for the Braves. Manuel was good again, but the story, of course, Percy Hawkins, 49 points, and the nation's number one scorer adds to his number. The folks in Charlotte won't forget the Hawk, and who knows, maybe he'll be wearing a Charlotte Hornet uniform when he plays in the NBA. Could well be. He'll be wearing one, that's for sure. Well, that wraps it up. Again, Bradley came in in the computer rankings. Frank talked about it. 18th in the country. They'll be sneaking in there. Frank, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Doug. Good night. Lots of fun. We'll wish you a good night, everybody. I'll see you Friday with Al Shepston at Illinois State as they take on Tulsa. In the meantime, let's throw it to Terry Scott, who's on the anchor desk. Terry. Thanks, Doug. Good evening. The feud is over. That's what members of Peoria's largest city union are saying tonight. They've agreed to drop charges of unfair labor practices, and in return, this city has agreed to meet some of their demands. Ben Stone was at tonight's union meeting. Ben, how close was the vote? Terry, in a word, it was overwhelming. The vote was 62 to 1 in favor of the agreement. Members say it marks the beginning of a new era in the city's relationship with its unions. Are, uh, pleased with what has turned out more than anything else. I think they're pleased that um, um, we have a good relationship, a good beginning uh, relationship with the new city manager and, and uh, just a better approach to the problems we still have to deal with. 
City Council imposed contract with Copia expired January 1st, but this agreement should improve the outlook for a new round of negotiations. Signifies an end of uh, fighting over 86 and 87. It signifies the end of the, you know, worrying about the past and now looking to the future. This agreement still needs the approval of the City Council. That could come in about two weeks. Well, obviously the city is going to save some time and money not fighting the charges, but what is the union going to get out of this? Uh, Terry, they're not giving us too many details, but they say that the city is giving back some benefits that were left out of the contract that was imposed in the fall of 1986, uh, but they said also that this agreement is not quite as generous as the contract the union had in 1985. Okay, thanks for that report, Ben. A Marquette Heights man tonight says he may not have won a new car, but he's better off than before he went to a Riverman game last week. If you were one of the 8,000 people who went to that game Wednesday, you saw Tom McCormick hit a hockey puck from mid-ice halfway through a goal. The announcer said he'd won a car, but University Ford said, wait a minute. They met tonight with McCormick and showed him an insurance policy that says the car dealer cannot give away a free car unless the puck goes all the way through the hole. McCormick says they did offer him several other options to choose from. There is a new ray of hope tonight for the financially troubled Canton Industrial Corporation. City officials say several companies are looking it over and at least two of them are interested in buying. Our biggest concern has always been that whoever comes in will maintain jobs and employment within the confines of that facility, be it Canton Industrial Corporation or an, another new name. This uh, whole uh, situation with CIC, as you know, has received widespread publicity, and uh, that's uh, had the hidden blessing of uh, drawing attention of those who uh, might uh, be interested in, in uh, acquiring that facility. There's also the possibility of an employee buyout through stock ownership. Peoria residents may no longer have to travel to East Peoria to shop at Walmart. Sources tell Eyewitness News Walmart officials have been working on plans with the Joseph Company for a new shopping center. It would be located behind the Bob Evans restaurant, but company officials say they're not ready to talk specifics. No change for some Admiral employees in Galesburg. The company's corporate parent called for some major reshuffling in upper management yesterday, and that had workers concerned about plans to move marketing, sales, and engineering departments to Galesburg. But tonight, officials say none of those changes will affect plans in Galesburg. You may have heard talk of cheaper airline fares and already started dreaming about a winter vacation. The bad news is those cut rate fares generally don't pertain to flights in and out of Peoria. Some trips from Chicago and St. Louis will cost 20 to 30 dollars less, but at least one local travel agent doesn't think that will mean a lot of business from the heart of Illinois. If it's been January, February, we can't count the weather, we can't count it being clear, so why drive to Chicago? I'm not sure we're going to make it weather-wise, but I don't think they'll drive for that amount. Most of the cut rate fares are scheduled to last only through the winter, which is traditionally a slow period for air travel. Would you be willing to pay more for property taxes to improve education? That's the question facing Morton residents tonight. The school board says it needs more money to keep up with curriculum. The district is currently facing a million dollar deficit, so they're asking residents to help. Under the plan, the owner of a $60,000 home would have to pay almost $300 more in doing taxes. Why we should be in a deficit. If the school needs it, I've got a daughter in high school, of course I'd like to see them get it. But personally, I'd like to be shown exactly where all this money's going that we're paying already. Yes, if I have to. i got granddaughters going to school, so I'll pay it if I have to. I don't, I don't want to, but I will. Morton residents will have a chance to voice their opinion on the proposed tax increase during the March 15th election. Lawmakers have voted to bail out the nation's largest farm lender, and today President Reagan signed a $4 billion bill into law. The farm credit system has lost more than that in the last two years, but the federal government hasn't offered any financial help since the Great Depression. Reagan says the new law will also bring some much-needed reforms. Some Americans say it's time the government made other reforms. Members of a local MIA support group brought their concerns to Congressman Bob Michael today. They want Michael to support a law that would declassify reports of people citing MIAs. We presented uh, petitions to him with 5,000 signatures from uh, registered voters in his district.